said to English, what is the name? English name for Ingo? It's a very, it's a very good question. I, have, I don't really know. There's not, it's not translatable. It's an, it's a Scandinavian name, probably Norwegian, uh, uh, from, uh, from background, and it's probably, it has something to do with an, uh, with the Nordic god, I think, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but there's no English translation for it, so it's, <laughs> yeah, because it's a I unique was, name. When I was reading your profile, you know, even uh, your looks, um, I thought um, you could be, yeah, maybe Scandinavian actually. Well, I mean, my roots, uh, my roots uh, are uh, for my parents are Austrian and 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 um, uh, Eastern, East, yeah. so so Slovenia, Yugoslavia, um, Russia, and this kind of thing. So yeah. that, yeah. But you're born in Austria, right? <laughs> I'm born in Austria, and I live in Zurich, in Switzerland, for the last uh, twelve oh, years already. Which town were you born? Uh, Vienna or Salzburg? I was born in the south, Klagenfurt, uh, yeah. which is um, close to the Italian border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, about two and a half hours from Salzburg. And now you're in, you live in Switzerland? Yes. And how come you decided to live in Switzerland? <laughs> well, this is uh, um, a story that, you know, when, when the traveling began, when my career began, then uh, I needed a place that is in, in the middle of, of Europe, uh, yes. where it's, uh, and Zurich is a perfect place, you have, you know, Four hours to Paris by train, three hours yeah. by car to Milano, uh, and uh, and of course it's a very 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 nice country to live in. It's the living standards excellent, and uh, it's one of the best countries in the world to live in. So I'm I haven't regretted my uh, decision. Yeah. <laughs> so two years, three years. Uh, twelve years. Twelve years. Wow, I see. It. That's a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I moved just uh, just after the Chopin competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you speak of your first language is Austrian. Right? Austrian, yeah, German, yeah, Austrian. You speak English and you speak French? Yeah, I do I do speak French, I do speak a bit of Polish, but... Um... Polish? Yeah, you, you speak very fast also, your tempo is very fast. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, well, you see, well, a lot of people say I speak very fast, but I'm happy your tempo is like my tempo. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. You know, the, your brains work quicker sometimes and then one has yeah. to speak quick. <laughs> yes, and of course you were also uh, learning a violin, right? Uh, when you were a child. Yes, that was the start of everything. Like my life was a completely different life than other professional musicians' lives. Yeah. Uh, I, I did music just for fun, uh, um, only on the violin. Um, I started when I was, I believe, four or five is years it, old. Is it because your parents influence or you just wanted to learn violin? Uh, you know, my parents love music, but my parents are complete amateurs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, which was very good. I, I, I come to to love that fact, mm -hmm. and uh, and so music was only fun. Music was not 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 connected yeah. for me with any chore, with yeah. any work. With it was fun, and yeah. already uh, with seven years of age, I played already for the local tourists uh, Austrian folk music on the violin with with a trio. Oh. Um, so, so that was pretty quickly. I was on stage, but only for fun. That was never forced. Excuse me? Yeah, you must have a very, very good ear, natural well, hearing. Well, I, I don't know. As, 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 as you see, that that's the beauty of it. I don't know really. I didn't know as a kid. You know, I just did what was natural. So, my, and my parents were not good enough to 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 know if yeah. I'm very yeah. good mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. You see, so everything was everything was just natural, mm -hmm. and and so I had fun with music. And then it was a complete coincidence that. A uh, very good piano teacher uh, from Austria uh, was hearing me fooling around on the on the piano because my 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 brother is seven years older than me, and uh, he's a film composer in Hollywood now. Uh, Ooh, but what he is was, his name? What's his name? Uh, Garrett Wunder. G E R R I T. Garrett. 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 What kind of a music yeah. did he compose for the movie? Because I I love movies, so maybe I heard his music. <laughs> Well, he, he composes lots uh, of music for um, uh, um, uh, TV series, for example, for Netflix, for Warner Brothers, for, you know, he's, he's a proper Hollywood composer, you know. Wow. So he, he writes all, all sorts of styles. But uh, the point was, uh, due to him being seven years older, uh, when I was a child, uh, he did everything before me, right? Yeah, I mean, seven years yeah, 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 in yeah. front. So, uh, so and then I was fooling around already on the piano because he played violin and piano. Yeah. And, uh, and then by coincidence in my conservatory where I studied uh, violin, um, a very famous piano teacher from Austria, which I didn't know that he was what, famous. What's his name? Uh, Horst Matthäus. He was in Linz. Um, I see. Yeah. And, and he was in Klagenfurt for a competition for his other students. Yeah. And yeah. he heard me in a, in a room fooling around and he contacted through the conservatory my parents and said, hey, 
your your kid has to has to play the piano, and I'm willing to uh, to teach him. And and that's what it's that's how it started when I was so 14. When, uh, so when he listened to you. What were you playing when he listened to music? Ah, uh, well, I was just fooling around. I think chords and and yeah, so that, uh, some that maybe some easy Mozart. Right? Naturally. Yes, absolutely natural. Yeah, so I mean, everything. you and your brother is like all oh, natural talent. You learned by ear, and you have such a good, good improvisation naturally, right? Um, I, I guess so. I mean, now now we know so, but at at the time at the time of of uh, when we were children, we, we as I said, everything was kind of. Fun and and I'm very very happy about that because I was never forced. I was never, you know, I never had to do something. I never had to do. I wanted, and everything came out of me. So um, that was that was very good. Wow, it's yeah. incredible because yeah, I because you know this morning um, I I heard a lot of your pieces, you know, and I listened to <laughs> Korean Rhapsody number six and the the, the Bellini, the Costa Costa Diva. Who, who who's the transcription is that? They they say it's Chopin's, but it it was just uh, there is no real manuscript left from that. Uh, so, so it's not uh, published because I never heard that music. Is it published? Um, I don't think it's published, but it's it may, maybe somebody wrote it down on the internet. But it's uh, it's they say Chopin played it this way, but you know it's a bit yeah, of yeah because I like it. it it's and not maybe published. Maybe actually you improvised it. You see, and you know the yeah. the, the, the liberty, the prelude liberty. Hmm. Yeah, it's my composition. Yeah. Oh, that is your composition. I compose, yes, oh, because my. Um... I think I, you know, I was impressed with the music, and when I heard it, really, it made my head like a movie, and it is oh. such a beautiful piece. When did you compose this piece? And that was uh, in 2018, I believe. That was also, you know, since since I um, since I had such an unusual life until now, I I needed to catch up. You know, when I, when you start with 14 and and decide with 15 you want to be a professional pianist, yeah. and and then you have a lot to catch up. You know, yeah. people already with 14 yeah. they yeah. already play concerts, yeah. and you are at the start. <laughs> so I had to learn, 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 yeah. and it was it was incredible the speed I I played. You know, all tra transcendentalist etudes after. Oh. Two years of playing the piano, yeah. and uh, I played Liszt Sonata after eight months of playing the piano, and uh, and uh, and so that was really quick. So I had to learn so much, and so I ne and since my brother is a composer, I never I never thought of composing myself. Yeah. I never, you know, it was just okay. I had to learn how to play the piano. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and then my wife Paulina, um, who is traveling with me, um, since I know her. Uh, no, and I'm happy about that. But she's from a very, very musical family. Oh. Her uh, her uncle is uh, uh, was he unfortunately died uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. He was the most important musicologist in Poland. Um, my oh. wife's Polish. So she's Polish. Uh, yes, and uh, so she was supposed to. She had the exact opposite of my life. Her father is a professional oboist yeah. at a Radio Philharmonic Orchestra. She was supposed to be a musician and did not. And I was never supposed to be a musician and became a musician. <laughs> so, Liberty, so how long did it so, take to you compose this music? As it's a, such a beautiful piece. Oh, thank you. No, I mean, you, you see, this is the. Um, this is. It was really my wife who said, "Listen, uh, you know, I, I started." I started to make some transcriptions. For example, yeah. I uh, made the orchestration of Allegro de Concert, uh, which is the third piano concerto uh, by Chopin, uh, first movement, which he never published because he abandoned uh, that concerto. Uh, so I, I wrote cadenzas to Mozart concerti, to Beethoven concerti on my own. And then my, my wife said one day, hey, uh, you, you have really a talent. You need to write. You need yeah. to write your own music. Yeah. And, and then I said, well, I don't know if I can. You know, I was reluctant. Uh, but, uh, but then I, I just sat down and started uh, improvising, started writing. And, uh, and since then I'm, I'm composing and now um, this season, so in July, for example, um, or already started last season actually, I play uh, often half of the program of my recitals, my own compositions. Well, I so, think that you, you should do it because I would even like <laughs> to play that Liberty if you in case of published. I like to play your music in my recital. <laughs> that's so cute. How long that's is that? Cute. Three minutes? I mean, four minutes? Um, that's roughly four minutes exactly, and and I. But uh, for example, last recital I played like almost forty minutes of my of my own music. And is this Liberty co uh, published this uh, composition? No, it's not yet published. I'm I'm looking uh, looking for a publisher, or I I mean I'm not really looking. I'm I'm thinking of. Uh, I haven't yet uh, approached no, I think anybody. You should start publishing your music. I I would be the first <laughs> one to play. I like to play that. You know? <laughs> oh, that is in the, the composition. Is H O R sure? It's a. I did not um, that's um, 
let's say, unusual story. He's a mathematician. No, he's Russian, but lives in the States. Um, and uh, and he um, and he he approached me, or his management approached uh, my management, about when was it? Four years yeah, ago, or yeah. something like this. And 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 his piano concerto was uh, very interesting to me. And I thought, hey, we need yeah. we need new composers. We need new music yeah. in our times. We have we have had too long of a, of a time where no beautiful music was composed, really. Uh, so I said, all right, I'll play it. So we, we had some tours through, through the States, through Russia, through Germany. We played at the Berlin Philharmonic. Uh, and it was a real success, this, this concerto. And I, I like his way of... Yeah, so where um, does he live? Because he's... Russia? In, in America. I know, he lives in New York. Oh, and also this uh, <laughs> Ro Robbie Williams. Now, Robbie Williams is a pop singer. Well, I he's love he's this, a pop uh, singer. I saw this YouTube you playing with Robbie Williams. Very jazzy piece. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's my that's my transcription, of course. But well, that was that. Yeah, uh, that was a great transcription. And I thought, oh wow, thank it's like you. a really a movie, and it has a, like a, the beginning is jazzy, and it's like a cadenza, and I really loved my favorite, the liberty and this, and yeah, that really <laughs> is a, shows that you're such a great composer. And that was oh, that's me, cute. Now, as you said, you see, a lot of people pairing of um, listening the same repertoire, and now you should really play so exactly. much of your pieces to introduce and. I exactly. like to play that, you know, this music, and when really <laughs> this movie, no wonder your brother is yeah, like uh, you know doing this uh, music for movie because you have such a talent, and I think you should do it for the drama <laughs> or the great movie. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you see, yeah. Thank you so much for your for your roses. <laughs> that's that's very nice. Uh, you know, I like I I write music. Uh, the difference, you know, if I know the, as I know the business as a pianist, uh, I know through my brother the business of film composing, mm. and uh, and it always uh, looks from the outside better than it in, is is in reality. Mm -hmm. So if you're a real proper film composer, you are in a system, you're in a machine, you have to compose, 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 mm. compose minutes of music every day, and then uh, 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 go on in, in a factory, so to speak. Mm. It's it's the business how it works, yeah, and yeah. and I and I write music. Um, uh, directly off my soul, basically. I write. I write what I feel. I write yeah, what yeah, I am. Yeah, the liberty is like very sentimental. You know, the feeling. You know. Yeah, but but I I, can, I cannot differ. You know, I sit down on the piano and I have an idea and I work on this idea. And uh, but I, so in other words, maybe I will write for film sometimes. Mm. But but I will definitely write music first. Yes. You see what I mean? My I my yeah, music. I understand what you're saying. Exactly. And, and if it. Yes. If it fits for the movie, then super. Yes. Yeah, but I know if it doesn't, yes. yeah, but I'm exactly. looking for it. I think you'll be successful very soon. You know, not only as a pianist, <laughs> but as a great composer. Because Thank you so I, much. You know, I listened to this uh, your Chopin, everything was great, but especially your composition, this Liberty and this Robbie Williams was really, it really affected me, you know, my heart. It's very, <laughs> very interesting, and it's such you have talent, it's such a freedom for the music <laughs> you know and also that's very also, uh, very nice very to hear. very huge hands <laughs> right <Do I? laughs> because no, you're no. like playing islamé <laughs> and you know it's such a big energy and also uh nice. you smile you're always smiling when you play and also pianists when they play they're like they also including me i, I hate my face when i'm playing like I become very serious you know like a witch but you are always <laughs> smiling and that's a very great thing Oh, that's that's kind. You know, you see how I how I see music, and this is uh, this is something, and then we can go uh, also to our mission, um, uh, the mission that my wife and I have, yeah. um, because that that root is exactly what you're saying, and I'm so it, it fills me with joy to hear you say this, uh, because uh, music has to be natural and musical, and uh, and uh, my my point is the most the best pianists or best musicians in the world play like they are. They yeah, they yeah. play their character. There is yeah. no barrier, see, and yeah, exactly. and this was in in last decades. Unfortunately, due to the business, the classical business, and so uh, people became very fake on, yeah, on average, yeah. and With and the they they play a, yeah. they play a certain way, and yeah. and the you know there's. And this is not how music works. Music works when it's natural, when it flows out of you. It's something we can't explain. Yeah. And um, yeah. and and you know, I, I so far I visited uh, 50 countries in my life. I played in 50 countries, and uh, and in all these countries, my wife and I, uh, we we were lucky to travel together yeah. uh, because my mentor Adam Harashevich, uh, his wife actually told me that was before the competition. She told me, Ingolf. 
never travel alone. <laughs> and, and, and she said, and, and I said, at that time I had no girlfriend, I had nothing. So I thought, okay, yeah, okay, I would love to not travel alone, but I am alone currently, see? But then I met my wife and, uh, and we were so blessed to, uh, to travel uh, everywhere together, see everything together. So, uh, and, uh, Madame Harashevich, she's a great mentor for you, right? Uh, my strategy, which absolutely yes, okay. uh, and so so we visited all these countries and yeah. we saw in these in these countries that there is a common problem all over the world, yeah. and this common problem is lack of musicality. Exactly this what you described, this natural flow of music. Uh, that music education is basically non-existent in so many countries, mm -hmm. and so my wife and I decided if we know kind of what's the root cause of the problem. Uh, and we don't anything. Uh, we don't do anything against it. We are guilty as well. Mm. So in about 2017, mm. we started our first company uh, and startup, um, which is now really successful and growing. Um, uh, so right now we are on a mission um, to really innovate and and um, uh, how do you say? In not only innovate but also make music education so much better worldwide that in some years so in 10 20 years from now we will have a new generation of of children that that get exactly what you said so this naturalness of music that you feel yeah. when something is honest and and such things and this is very very important and not taken care of by the business not mm -hmm. taken care of by major institutions of education and so this my, my wife and i are doing so currently we are having an internet uh, startup that is used by the major universities in the german speaking area then uh, we are having a machine learning uh, artificial intelligence uh, project with the yeah. technical university in switzerland to go into music into musicality and we have a neuroscience project for music oh. uh, and we we started a high hybrid academy for very talented musicians called the Paderewski Academy. Oh, okay. So you see, we, we are doing we are doing loads of uh, things. So th the day is too short uh, for all the things we do, um, but it's all for music, all for the musicality. Wow. All so what is the name of this uh, company? Um, several things. So one a startup is called Appassimo. Uh, so it's like Appassionata, just Appassimo. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the, the academy is called Paderewski Academy. So the uh, URL is paderewski.academy. Uh -huh. Yeah, is this um, a, the homepage, right? Uh, there's a link for this. Uh, I can see by yes. Homepage. Yeah. Yes, I can. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes. So and, we're doing uh, so many things. Also, so. I mean, for the children, young kids. Are you thinking for this um, education for like you know three or four years? Yes, um, we are also involved in a robotics uh, startup that uh, uses uh, uh, robotics and high high technology to mm -hmm. to make this musicality more. Because what we want to do, I'm I'm a very uh, I like technology a lot since I'm a kid, but I don't like where technology goes. Uh, in in let's say we humans try to art make artificial everything and use technology for the wrong means. In my opinion, we want to use technology to actually enhance the human factor. Yeah, yeah. And the, the human factor is the music. Yeah. If you if you just program music, it's not going to be music. Yeah, it's it's going to be yeah, harmonic, yeah. harmonics, melody, but it will not touch you. It will not touch your nervous system. Music has to come out of the, uh, out of the body. Heart. Yeah, and in this mission, I'm, I'm very blessed because so far I had a TEDx talk about that. I, I spoke at the United Nations. Uh, my, my speech was uh, translated in seven languages live, and oh, so wow. I was very, very excited. Mm. Uh, so, so all for that, that, that policymakers, that politicians, and, and these people who have unfortunately not much clue about music, wake up and, and uh, start feeling, hey, music is not only important if you're a musician, it's important for all of us because we, human, we humans are waves. Mm -hmm. All the cells, they are waves and music frequency are waves. So without music, there's no life. Yeah, you know, because I think that the, like a golden age, a Horowitz, a Shirashelka, those golden age people, pianists, are the real pianists, you know what I mean? The, the sound, the music playing. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, with the competition, of course, I'm sometimes it's good competition, but like so many competitions, the young pianists, to, to, they play the, the speed so fast, the accuracy, everything becomes exactly. very artificial. And even exactly. they try to 
make the performance very pretentious to 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 win the competition you know what i mean not from your i'm heart. so i'm so happy i'm so happy to hear you say yeah, that you know, because this is exactly right musicality you can if you're real music you can hear it's like it's not coming from his heart but it's just making to impress people you know what i mean for the audience exactly i know and those things i know 100 you can you just immediately recognize and but with the youtube you can download things easily that's good in a way but this is the sound, live sound from the musician, the real sound without the microphone, which is very important, which, you know, reaches to your heart. And yeah. I think it now, it, now that it's, people are not looking for the quality of the tonality, but speed. And you know what I mean? I'm 100%, you know, very, very happy to hear this, you know. And uh, I hope you, you know, continue playing your pieces and... Uh, people would absolutely start playing you know your pieces you know because i even wanted to play this liberty i wanted to play this <laughs> ruby william you know very very interesting that's uh, that's uh, so so good to hear because you see i uh, you you mentioned uh, rightly horowitz and Tchaikovsky and and people like that i i 100 agree how they played but one has to always say that horowitz was still he he didn't call himself a composer but he was still composing yeah. and uh, and but he was already saying anna he's a bad composer and so because he didn't want to compose probably yeah. uh, but he did comp but he did compose and quite funny actually i mean mm -hmm. i recorded one of his compositions in uh, one of my cds 300. Oh, which, uh, what, um, what piece is that um, uh, vol, uh, vals excentrique, vals oh, excentrique. I didn't know. This. Is it very difficult? Uh, virtuosic piece? Um, uh, it, it's a funny piece. It, it's it's of course not easy, but it's it's not it's not his his common variations mm -hmm. or something. It's it's a it's a proper composition because I wanted a real Horowitz. I, I didn't want his transcription. I wanted a real Horowitz. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but what I wanted to say actually, I in my mind, I go even one generation or two generations before Horowitz because th this generation before Horowitz mm -hmm. so we are going into the end of 19th century beginning of 20th century really beginning uh, these composers uh, sorry pianists composed all of them all of them composed and all of them played how they are that's why you have so many uh, if you listen to De Pachmann, to Friedman, yeah, to yeah, Rosenthal, yeah. to uh, Kocharski, Kocharski burned his of, uh, of compositions until Opus 49, he burned it because he said, oh, I wrote like a child. <laughs> so, so, you know, but Russian he composed. No, Polish. Polish. He lived right? in Berlin, yeah. I think, in Germany, he, but he was an aristocrat, uh, but he was Polish, uh, mm -hmm. probably with some German uh, roots as well. I don't know, but po yeah. absolutely Polish. And he plays Polish 100%. Uh, do you have any plan to come to Japan soon? I hope you'll come to Japan and, you know, to show us your competitions, <laughs> compositions. Well, I would love to. I mean, the thing is, uh, I have I have uh, one of my best friends is is, is Japanese. He's in, he's in Tokyo, oh. so I have very personal uh, connection to to Japan. Uh, ever since I first visited, um, the thing is just with me now. Uh, we we have so many projects going on uh, that and I. I don't know if you saw it on social media, but I uh, I just got a son. He's two weeks old. Oh, congratulations! Uh, yeah, is it your first son, <laughs> first baby? Yes, exactly. First kid. And uh, so the next the next couple of months, uh, I, I tried to, I canceled my, my concerts uh, for the next months to just to have time for the project and for the sun. Uh, because I want, you know, if I, as I, my character is, if I do something, I do something 100%. Yes. So and if you have, if you have a kid, uh, I want to have time for the kid. Uh, so yes. do, you, do you like to him to become a musician for him or not? Actually not. Uh, I mean, you know, I will. Uh, I, I say uh, I will support him uh, with everything he wants to do, and uh, he, his passion should be this what he should do. But mm -hmm. if I if I would wish, I would. You know, I know the music business. Uh, I would wish that he does something else. Mm -hmm. But if he's really good at music, uh, then he should do music. You know, I liked I like the way uh, uh, Erich Kleiber did that because mm -hmm. uh, Carlos Kleiber is is my favorite conductor of all uh -huh. time, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know Erich Kleiber was. So so famous, super famous conductor. Yeah. And he prevented Carlos from becoming a musician. He said, no, you're not gonna. So he studied chemistry in Zurich and all that, Carlos. And then he started making music when he was 20 or 22. And then he became the best conductor ever living. So again, you can't force things. If he will do what he will do, he will be supported. Uh, but uh, but music music is a hard, hard profession, So and I know it, so that's why you know well so you must be so happy now right absolutely now he's amazing he's fantastic i'm so grateful that you know 
that he's healthy, that uh, everything is, seems perfect. Does he perfect. look like you or your wife? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. He looks like a very cute newborn, uh, oh. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. <laughs> and, by the way, tell me, do you have any hobbies, sports, your hobby you like to do out of piano or something? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I used to play tennis a lot. Uh, oh. Uh, when I was uh, started, when I was 17, 18, uh, yeah. and I played uh, minor, minor league tennis in Austria. Uh, so I'm, I like to play twice a week tennis. And now, the time since I started traveling so much, we had a hundred flights a year uh, in the last ten years. Uh, it, I, I play a little bit less. Doesn't hurt you, your wrist. No, if you, if, if you know how to play, because the thing is, like I, I played for a couple of years professional. Like I mean, at least you know league but of course lowest so not not ATP uh, but but then you you have to train a lot but then when I'm then after these couple of we, uh, years I, I just play for fun yeah. and once you have a proper technique you play only with swing and you play with basically with with your legs so if you play properly you don't feel anything oh. yeah does your wife play tennis with you <laughs> no, but we do play tennis, badminton, badminton yeah. Oh, well, much, much, right? <laughs> yes. And your fist so. finger is very long too, your fist finger. Uh, that's right, yeah. that's right. It's almost like the fourth, yeah. Yeah, that is very characteristic, <laughs> yeah. So it must be so easy to the chords and rough minor, for example, list, right? Yeah, I mean, I can do CF, yeah. Oh, CF, easily. Yeah. Wow, lucky yeah. you. No, well, it, but easily not easily a CE, but CF so, I can if I if I play yeah. chord. So what's your favorite concerto to perform? I only listen to your you know the Chopin concerto, but your favorite uh, concerto to play to perform. Difficult. I mean, uh, first Chopin is definitely one of them. Yeah. Uh, I like it very much. Uh, I like fifth Beethoven concerto was uh, was the first concerto I've ever played live when I was fifteen and a half. Oh. Uh, these are definitely two of my favorite concerto. List first is a favorite one. Um, uh, then what else? Mozart four six seven I like a oh, lot. Oh, oh, oh. Um, what else? Of How course, like Rachmaninoff second. Do you like Prokofiev? I I played third Prokofiev piano concerto when I was seventeen and a half after three years of playing the piano. What? <laughs> so after and I played it with Teatro. Yeah, after three years and a half of playing the piano, so with 17 and a half, I, I, I started uh, playing it. And with almost 18, I played it with uh, Crivin and uh, in the Théâtre Champs-Élysées with Orchestre National de France. And uh, did you, who told you to play the such concert? Did you, did you choose this repertoire or your Mr. Harakiri? I chose everything. So this is, the, this is the, 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 the nice thing about my life so far is that I, I, can, re I can really say that I haven't played any piece life that I didn't love to play and didn't oh, like that, to play. How lucky, how lucky. Respect I, to you and also very lucky because your life is always, you just believe yourself and you do only thing you like to do in and also in the repertoire and not a lot of people can do that. And I think you're very, very lucky and um, I'm very happy to hear I know. That. I'm very happy that you that you say that. Uh, definitely, I feel lucky. I'm feel I feel blessed. Mm. But I know as well. I know how hard it is to do it this way as well. So I know the downsides of it as well. So it's not only luck. It's uh, because it, uh, whenever you do something with conviction, uh, then there will be a time when the wave goes down, and stuff is not going maybe as you want, and then it's the time where you have to be perseverant and where you have to say no. I'm gonna do this. I'm stick with sticking with it, and then you come slowly out of the valley. But many people give up when it goes down because they, they some people start believing in something, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden life is not good to them, and mm -hmm. it goes down, and they think, no, 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 let's do rather what they want yeah, uh, to yeah. uh, to do it, and and this is what you shouldn't do, and what yeah. one shouldn't do, and if one is strong enough, then it goes up. Yeah. And, and what is your favorite food, and what is your favorite um? Literature, your favorite book? Ah, difficult question. Um, I like Dostoevsky. I, Dostoevsky. I like, uh, yeah, I like him a lot. But I have to admit, uh, I read also loads of since I, since I have so many companies now and, and projects. We are running three, four companies right now. I had to the last five, six years. I read so much about startup, about financing, about all. So I'm so much into, so much into, you know, uh, books that give you knowledge. <laughs> so that I really enjoy them. Which piece? Which uh, which piece? Which uh... yeah, crime and punishment, exactly. Yeah, Schulzine, exactly. 
crime of punishment. Crime of punishment. <laughs> crime, yeah, crime, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and your favorite food, what is your favorite food? Um, also a difficult question because I like food a lot. Um, uh, good food. Yeah, <laughs> so, do you cook uh, but yourself? If I have to... Uh, no, uh, but my wife is a master chef. Like oh. she is really, she has a talent. I mean, she's not a, a cook, obviously, but she does it just privately. Yeah. But but she has such a talent that she, we, if we travel somewhere and she tastes something, she can recook it. Oh wow, wow! Uh, it's really amazing. So I, I love. I mean, if I have to choose, I would say still Italian cuisine. Italian cuisine. Um, uh, so favorite food i mean really i, I like like a really homemade mm. pasta or, mm. or homemade uh, like a la mama yeah yeah so like even the pasta <laughs> so, made at home right yeah this is really 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 something good but in japan every time in japan i like your uh, your cuisine as well so much uh, so i i really like the variety of of tastes and and experiences mm -hmm. um but probably italian if i have to choose but i i wouldn't want to choose <laughs> The end. Could you please give us the message for Japanese, uh, the readers of this magazine, or young Japanese pianists reading this magazine? Um, well, um, sorry, before I do this, uh, one more thing about um, also. Um, Tolstoy, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because they, I was also looking for the for the um, uh, the Krieg und Frieden is in English. Um, what I mentioned first, and what, let me check because this, I, I read them in German. That's my problem. War and peace. Ah, so war, war and yeah, peace yeah, yeah. and Have you war read and peace the, and crime and punishment. White so. Knight by Dostoevsky. White Knight. It's a very short, yes, short one. Think, yeah. That is yeah. actually yeah. My, I like that very much. Yeah. Anyway, so but now to the, uh, to the message. Uh, um, so I would just say we have we had already many messages in this talk. I would say. Yeah. Um, but to uh, to um, to boil it down to this, I would say uh, music music doesn't exist without musicality and without emotion delivered. And musicality is very very uh, a difficult word because many people think just because you can play a piece quick, you are musical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. Musicality is something that comes out of emotion, out of our nervous systems. Yeah. So if we, if, uh, if young pianists, also those that I give master classes, it's always about expressions. It's about bringing emotions into that web of yeah. harmony and phrases. And without this, there is no music. Yeah. So never never play notes without meaning yeah and i exactly. so this is this is uh, i think the, the biggest message yeah and yeah. not many people you know it, it seems simple but many people are forgetting that you know they're just going for other things but i tell you it's it, it, you're right it seems simple but i i have a theory why that is because uh many people in the last decades uh, use what I call in my TEDx talk empty phrasing, empty phrases. They, people use the right words, like for example, never play music without meaning. That's an empty phrase if you don't know what it means. Mm, it's true. And it's that's true. why people people get learned this on the paper. Yeah, no meaning. I yeah, know they have to play what's in the score and other thing. Yeah, but you know, but they never have this emotional attachment to what it actually means. Mm. Meaning. What is expression in music? And this is what I can tell every uh, young pianist, search for this, never stop searching, even if you will never find it, never give up, it is there, uh, and, um, and that's the beauty. And so, <laughs> please uh, keep composing fantastic pieces, I'm really looking forward. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, so thank much. you very much. Bye, thanks, bye-bye. <laughs>